There we go. So now that this half is flattened, I'm just going to go ahead and flatten the other half. Once I've done that, I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll go on to the next step. Here we go. Right, here's the bow flattened up. So it's pretty good. It's got a nice even flex to it. So now the next step is to heat up the tips and shape them. And then we're going to heat the handle. This bow is going to be done in a pretty similar fashion to the Hobbit inspired bow that I did not too long ago. It's going to be a little bit different, but the same ideas apply. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is heat up the tip and then flatten it sideways. And that's going to be done on the flattening jig like this. So, really simple. Now unlike the heat gun, it's kind of hard to just keep the torch on a flat surface and move the pipe fast enough to prevent burns. So, we're basically just going to hold it like we did in the trough, except you can just hold it in the air. And actually, the torch gives off enough heat that you don't really need the heating trough so much. So, here we go. now pretty soft. Actually, I'm going to heat it just a little bit more. Alright, so here we go. Now it's nice and pliable, so what I'm going to do set it down here, place the flattening jig over it, And then you just need one clamp, clamp it into place. And you want to clamp it into place right along the uh, nine inch line. You just want to clamp it until the end closes up and your spacers have touched down on the board. So now that this is set, I'm just going to let it cool. Once it's cool, we're going to come back, bring it back, and then we're going to build in some uh, transition here so that when you have the tip in place, or the sear as it may, the end lever in place, it'll have more support behind it so it won't break or bend, which is really important for the Schedule 80 pipe. But here we go. I'm going to let it cool and then we'll go on to the next step. Alright, so here's what the tip looks like right now. As you can see, it's still offset to one side and there's a pretty harsh crease right there. So what we're going to do is heat from the three inch mark down here up to about an inch or two past this mark. I'm just going to heat this up until it puffs out. Once it does that we can form it, shape it, and make this whole thing just run really smooth together. So here we go. see everything sort of coming back so now you want to do a couple things you want to kind of smush the bottom to bring it back so you have a nice transition here 
but you don't want to get it too thick right in this section. So it's going to take a little bit of pressing. Be careful, this is very hot. You're going to need some kind of hand protection. Doesn't matter that I'm not using any. And then this top portion here, you want to sight down, make sure it's lining up with everything. You're going to need to press it back to center because it was formed off center. You're going to have to do some forming around here too to bring it back to true. It takes a little practice to get this all right. Just form it while well, you can still form it. It's going to take a little bit. Once you got it, everything should line up nice. Okay, cool. So you can see you have a nice taper all the way from here up to here, and from here down to here. So it's just one continuous taper. That way, once we go ahead and shape the back here, it'll all be really nice and set up for whatever we want to do with it from there on. And now that this is done, we want to go ahead and do it to the other side. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what that looks like. All right. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and take the flattened portion and you want to draw out what you want your tip to look like. You can get pretty creative here. I'm just going for a simple shape. You can have some cutouts and whatnot. Just make sure that if you do anything really decorative, it's on the side where the cut already exists. And once you've gone in about three or four inches, don't go past the center point. You want this to be plenty strong so that it'll hold up to the rest of the bow. Once you've done that, go ahead and cut it out. This was just cut out with a saw. So the next step will be to go back and clean this out. And what I've been doing is just sort of cleaning out the interior here and rounding the inside so that instead of trying to seal this up so that you can't see it, just to round this off so it has a nice uh, rounded appearance to it, but close it up so you can still tell this is a PVC bow. It's kind of a neat technique, so that's basically what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to cut this side and we'll get working on the tips. Here we go. Alright, so the next thing that I do is I want to take a knife and cut this section out and smooth it out. Everything that I'm going to do here can be done with a simple knife. I'm just going to be using this for this, but I'm just going to kind of explain it. What you want to do is you want to heat this portion up here. So once you heat this up just a little bit, this knife will cut through this plastic like butter. You're going to want to cut, kind of following this edge all the way down, maintaining the edge to the point where this line is. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is take your knife in the hollow and just sort of run it along its length. What, the, what that does is it rounds off the inside and then you'll follow up by running your knife across the outside in a similar fashion. And in the end, you'll end up with something like this. So you can see I've heated this up and cut clear down to the base here. You want this to be smooth so that when we heat this up and bring it in, there'll be a nice, uh, just a really nice splice here with both sides slightly rounded. You can see I've gone ahead and rounded both the inside and the outside and I didn't use any sandpaper or anything on this. This is all just with the knife. So I'm just going to finish this up real quick because I want this finished before I go to the next step. And then we'll move on to the next step of fusing this together. Here we go. Alright, so I've gone ahead and I've cleaned up both sides. So now the next step is to just gently heat this 
portion so that the two sides will come together and meet in the middle. Now you could keep this flat, form this together, then smooth it over and fill it with epoxy or something like that. But I'm just going to leave it so that there's a nice rounded steam, uh, seam here. So here we go. Okay, make sure everything's lined up. And there you go. That's it. So here's the tip finished up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this on this side. Once I'm done, we can work on the handle. Here we go.